Hey everyone, Dave here. Day three of the project. We had some technical difficulties with our camera yesterday and we weren't able to film all the way the process of uh, laying the shingles. Uh, so what we're gonna do is we're just gonna wrap this up today. Uh, I got the camera back working. Uh, take you on a, a tour up on the top of the roof. Uh, show you what's left and how we're going to do that and we'll wrap up this project so we'll get started here in just a minute there's the roof all done we'll go up here and take a look all we have left to do is put on this now I've never put on this product before I have used the uh, the product that was plastic that you would roll out this is kind of a a meshy material comes with uh, one coiled nails in them right there at the bottom and since I'm not using a coil nailer on this project we won't need those but I, I've read the instructions it looks fairly easy uh, to do so we'll get started on that here and that will wrap up this roof we want to get it done today um, it's a beautiful day but there are our clouds moving in and uh, they have forecasted rain for tomorrow. Uh, the cap shingles, the roof cap. All right, so you can see we've got the last of the shingles up. And because that uh, ridge cap doesn't fit all the way over, I had to use a half a shingle here. So what we did so on the back side of the shingle where they joined together, we just scored it and snapped off the top part of the shingle and then use the rest of the shingle here to make it so make it cover properly. So what I'm gonna do today is this material here is just a felt and we'll cut this back here to right there on both sides and then we'll remove the felt. That'll open this up and then we'll put the ridge vent material, or what's called Cobra exhaust on, and then we'll put the ridge cap on. And that should finish up this project. So I'll get my tools and we'll get going. All right, so I read the uh, instructions on the venting material and the shingles. I've, I've done the shingles a hundred times. So those are fairly easy to do. But the instructions for those of you who have never done roofing and, and want to try it yourself, they're on the back side of your shingles. Read them fully. You know, I know guys, you know, typically we don't read a darn thing, but you know, read, it tells you where you need to nail them right there on that little dot, okay? Tells you how many linear feet that it'll cover. Read the instructions on this. So we're gonna go from the ridge line there all the way down with that material. And then we're going to start here and work towards the front of the garage with the shingles. And I'll show you how each are put on. All right, first things first, we need to cut out the paper on here. Right to in front of the camera, I stopped. All right, so we need to just cut this back a little bit on each side to expose more of the venting. All right, I'm just gonna use a pair of snips, probably easier to sit down better on my back, but uh, we'll use these to cut this back just a little bit. Make sure we got a little more airflow. The instructions on the uh, 
cobra vent. Said to cut the sheeting back an inch from the ridge on each side. Uh, I cut it back an inch just to give it a little bit more. Uh, when they built this garage years ago, they did not a very good job with the framing and all kinds of other aspects on this garage. So I wanted to make sure that we did it right and gave it, so I went an inch and a half down on either side, which will give us three inches of venting on the top. I'm sure that the two inches would have been fine. I just wanted to go with the just about half inch bigger. See, I'll cut this back uh, so we get a little bit more flow here. Boy, I'm so right-handed. I can't cut with my left at all. Hey, you could try to cut this with a utility knife, but I'm telling you right now, it ain't gonna happen. You'll have no blade left by the time you get halfway down, you know, five feet down here and the blade will be toast because you're cutting through the stone. That's why you always cut on the back side of a shingle uh, when you go to cut it for, for length. Cut on the back side, you can score it and then just snap it. The warmer it is, the better that it works. So you guys have an idea what I'm doing here? I'll uh, bring you back when I've got that all done. All right, we're back. So that took about 25 minutes to get the shingles cut back just a little bit and the felt cut back. Before we rolled the felt down, we had cut the inch and a half of sheathing off on either side. So now we'll roll the material on here and get going. All right, well, I'm short, about four feet. Should have read the package better. <laughs> it happens, I'll have to go down and pick up another one. All right, so let me show you how to get these things on here. All right. So they come in a long strip, almost like a shingle, and they're pre-perforated on both sides. And you just fold them back and forth until they break off. Now you can see that one already started. All right, so you get three out of one. So the instructions say you should be about an inch or so in and off this back line, maybe three quarters of an inch, inch as well. And that's where your nail goes. Okay, on both of these. So here, I'll show you. Now, some guys will snap a line on the roof, which is probably not a bad idea. I did it by eye. My eye is pretty good. Not great, but pretty good. You know, you get old. Your eyes aren't as good as they used to be. What I'm trying to do is have the same amount of distance between here and here and here and here. Because they came up the roof exactly the same all right so the uh, manufacturer's installation instructions said to leave five eighths of an inch of gap so don't drive this all the way down to the shingle because then you don't get any airflow through here and that defeats the purpose of putting on a ridge ridge vent or ridge ridge cap with the the uh, venting underneath the ridge vent underneath so uh the Cobra material here said five eighths of an inch. And you know, to be honest with you, that's probably about the thickness of my finger. You don't want to drive it down too much. All right, same thing, put the nail on this side. 
I get it started and I kind of hold the thing in place. Drive it down to just about my finger fits underneath that. All right, and we just keep on going down the roof. Now I'm gonna show you what I did here on the other end. Uh, it has got a, a, a sticky tab that's supposed to adhere down and stick down uh, and hold the the first one on. I drove two nails right there and there. And what I'll do is I'll take some roof jack or some black jack, whatever you want to call it. It's uh comes in a tube, a caulking tube uh, of tar, and I'll tar over the top of those nails so they don't leak. Um, and you don't smear it because you don't want it to look ugly. And nobody's going to see it from the ground, but the last thing you want it to do is to leak. Now, it is over the soffited end, and, and if it did leak, it would run into the soffit and run out. Uh, however, you know, you don't want that water running on your sheathing. That'll just rot it out. So we'll cover that over. All right, see the sticky tab here? That tar will line up and stick to that nail. And that's what you want it to do. So if you don't want to void the warranty on your material in your roof, you have to install it in the way the manufacturer suggests. So when we're done with this video, I'll give you the total cost. So right now I'm just under a thousand dollars worth of material for the roof. And this roof is uh, 27 foot long this way, and each side of the roof is 10 foot. That's how you figure out what you're gonna need for shingles. Now, to do that, you're gonna do 27 times 10. That'll give you your square footage. Once you have your square footage of each side, okay, you divide that by a square and a square is 10 foot by 10 foot, and that's what each bundle of shingles. But you have to reach, now I don't, I don't, that's not ac accurate. Read the bundle of shingles that you're picking, the type that you're picking, whether you're gonna have architectural style or you're gonna have, uh, you know, three tab or whatever, what, how many, whatever type of shingles you're gonna have. Read to find out how many squares a bundle will cover, okay? And then you can figure out by the square footage of your roof, how many bundles of shingles that you need. Now a bundle, these architectural, these gray architectural, they ran about $30, 30, $31 a bundle down at Lowe's. And I originally figured 16 and I was wrong. I was off by one bundle, so I had to go back and get another one last night to finish up. So uh, this job took 17 bundles of shingles. And each bundle on this particular manufacturer covers 100 square feet. That's 10 foot by 10 foot. Now, you can use a coil nailer. The uh, company Cobra that provided this had a uh, inch and three quarter uh, coil for a coil nailer. The nails have to be long enough to drive through the shingle, drive through the Cobra material, the vented material, and then drive through your shingles into your sheathing and still allow enough air or gap. I had read it on the manufacturer and since I hand drove this roof instead of 
going out and buying a coil nailer. I used to have one. I got rid of it years ago when I quit doing this work full time. Because uh, it's just tough on the body. Uh, so I didn't want to go buy out and buy like buy one. I mean, they run. I don't know, they run 150, 200 bucks, depending on, you know, which manufacturer you're buying and so on. And it's just, you know, doing this roof myself on my own garage. And I um, don't plan on doing this for a living, so I'm not buying a coil nailer. I'll hand drive it. It's really not that big of a roof. There it is, you can see I'm short. So I'll just get down to the end, make sure that I have enough ridge cap. Uh, according to uh, the manufacturer, it should be enough to do this, but with my luck, I screwed that up too. <laughs> and then I'll have to, <laughs> I'll have to take another run down to the store. All right, a couple more of these, and I'm gonna jump down and take a little coffee break, get some coffee. I made it and it's sitting down there getting cold. My son, my, my third child, my, my son, bought me one of those Keurig uh, not Keurig, uh, Yeti uh, coffee mugs. It works pretty good. Alright, last one for right now. And then we'll go take a coffee break and then get back at it. Now that nail was crappy. I have to put another one in there. I had everything but the darn nail. There we go. Here, I'll show you what I did. Look what I did to that one nail. I hit everything but the nail, so I drove one next to it. All right, we'll bring you back in a few minutes after the coffee break. All right, so maybe you can see it a little later here. See how those are kind of sticking up? Those will flatten down when it gets warm. But I wanted to show you this. Yay for Dave's math skills. I uh, didn't figure enough. Um, both on the venting material and the ridge cap because it came to exactly 25 feet uh, well actually a little under 25 feet so um, got to run down to the lumber yard pick up some more uh, that'll just get added to the bill his whole job but you know you like to go to the store once but with all these jobs a lot of times you end up going more than one time. So I'm going to run down to the lumber yard and then uh, we'll get the one more bundle of ridge cap and one more roll of the vent. But if you, you look, it looks pretty good. Came out okay for a guy that doesn't do roofing anymore. Now I know you guys that are roofers out there are probably going to leave all kinds of comments. Uh, on the video about the way I could have done it better. Or I goofed this up. I follow all the manufacturer's instructions. I've been doing it for, for years. This roof isn't going to go anywhere. Um, before this needs, needs to be re-roofed by anybody, I'll be dead. <laughs> so, you know, it'll be here for quite a few years. All right, we'll uh, go to the store and we'll be right back. All right, so back from Lowe's, uh, picking up one bundle of ridge cap and the Cobra exhaust vent or ridge vent costs $108 with tax. So we'll have to add that to the final bill. That'll push me probably over a little over a thousand to have this job, just in materials 
alone. I'll add it all up. We'll put it at the end of the video so you can see what costs what, uh, including the cost of the dumpster and so on. So I'm going to get up there and get this finished. Papa, the silver angel has the long sword. It has the long neck. He has that sword, but it, but he cannot go. He's he's on the oath. He's in the he's in the sky, but not he's no, he he won't come down the oath. Who won't? something I wanted to talk to you about and you might ask why I started from the back and worked front forward on that ridge cap. What I did is the wind, this is a west facing this way. Okay, so basically the end of that garage faces west. What I wanted to do is I didn't want the wind to be coming this way and catching those and possibly tearing them up especially here in illinois we got tornado season coming up which is april may june okay actually you can get them at any time here in illinois but i wanted to i wanted to run it so they ran backwards that uh, the wind was coming this way would sweep over the top of them if I, turned them around, if I had turned them around the other way, the wind would catch the end of it, and I didn't want that to happen. Little dab here. Little dab there. Now I'm going to take a knife. Smooth it out a little bit. Make it look pretty. All right, you just want to seal those in like that. Here, uh, we'll down, down this end as well. So, there's the roof, it's all done. Okay, um, and I'll give you the, the price here. I'll attach it uh, with the last little bundles that I had to get. I think it pushed us over the $1,000 mark. Like I said, it's uh, 10 foot, basically 10 foot down from the peak down uh, by 27 foot. Long. Let's see. Nobody in the world's ever going to see those up here. But you don't want it to leak. All right. Well, that'll be it for this video. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope it was informative. Leave your comments below. Uh, be kind. This uh, video is made to help those of you who like to do handy, handy stuff around a yard, a yard and house and want to save yourself a little bit of money and uh, do a project like this. Um, we started on a Sunday afternoon tearing off the roof, and then it's uh, Wednesday morning, not even quite noon, and we are done. So I hope you enjoyed this video. Thanks for watching.